Last season in the finals, everybody online was raving about the Boston Celtics. I mean, anywhere you looked online, whether it was from ex-NBA players like Jalen Rose, ex-champs like Birkins, ex-sharpshooters like JJ Redick, all you heard was, they're taller, they're lengthier, they're younger, they're hungrier. And yet, what happened when it was all said and done? The Warriors exposed the Celtics and won another championship, another ring, and another banner. Anyway, uh, the other day, after I was done shooting some hoops at the local rec center, my phone started blowing up with GP2, GP2, and more GP2 news. When I saw all those messages, I smiled and said to myself, the Warriors are about to expose the NBA again. Here's Gary Payton guarding Spencer Dinwiddie. Look at how the young glove sticks on him like bees do to honey, then he steals the incoming pass. You know, I don't care what anyone says, this dude is the best perimeter defender in the NBA. I mean, his lateral quickness, his awareness of where the ball is going, his defensive instincts is second to nobody. Here's another look. He's guarding Luka Doncic on the possession at the top of the key. Check out that low body position he employs as the Mavericks superstar tries to play a bit of bully ball. Usually, when Luka backs down a smaller guard, he gets whatever shot he wants, and it's a sure bucket, but uh, not against the young glove. Because look at that. Peyton's like six foot three, and not only does he prevent Luka from backing him down to the basket, but look at that challenge. He made that shot about as hard as it gets against a primetime bucket getter. Anyway, the young glove might not be the type of player who gets like 30 points a game, but look at what he did do for the Warriors last season in the playoffs. When he was on the court, opponents only scored an average of 101.5 points per game, but when he was off the court, they scored 112.7 points per game. And uh, what's been the Warriors' main struggle all season? If you guess defense, give yourself a pat on the back, because you're right. If you don't believe me, just take a look. In the Western Conference, the Warriors actually have the second highest points per game average at 118.5. Actually, scratch that. Not just the Western Conference, but in the entire league. The Warriors have the second highest points per game average. They're only trailing the Sacramento Kings probably because Mike Brown is teaching them all their secrets. <laughs> but honestly, look, the Celtics don't score more than the Warriors, nor do the Nuggets, Grizzlies, Bucks, or 76ers. So yeah, the reason why the Warriors haven't looked like a championship team has got nothing to do with how they generate offense. It's just due to the fact that they can't get stops. Well, that's going to change completely once GP2 enters the rotation. I mean, look at this lineup the Warriors could employ. GP2 could guard the point of attack, then from there you got Kaminga and Wiggins, then you got Draymond and Looney behind them. That's Clamp City, guys. I mean, when Curry's on the bench and Kerr just needs some stops, that's a pretty ferocious defensive lineup, if you ask me. Anyway, moving on here. A lot of people seem to be writing off the season after the Suns acquired Kevin Durant, but honestly, when Curry and GP2 return to the lineup in about a month, I still see them as the team coming out of the West. And here's why. The Suns have a ton of question marks. What I mean is that Devin Booker just returned from two injuries, a groin injury and a hamstring injury. Kevin Durant is nursing his own MCL injury. Chris Paul is 37 and will be 38 in the playoffs. Aiton is the only one fully healthy, but hey, he and Monty Williams can blow up again at any moment. Can they honestly handle a surging Western Conference where practically teams 2 through 13 aren't fighting for a playoff spot? I mean, if they're not at 100%, the Warriors are going to eat them alive. Then when it comes to the Nuggets, I think that'll be a series to watch, Golden State versus Denver. I see the Warriors coming out on top, though, in perhaps six or seven games, and again, it comes down to defense and offense. With the second highest offense in the league and arguably a top five defense when GP2 returns to the lineup, I just don't see the Warriors losing four games out of seven. Some of y'all might be saying that the Warriors still didn't do enough at the end of the trade deadline, that they didn't get enough pieces to win a championship, but hey, look. Wiggins just came back from an injury, and in one of the latest games against the Wizards, he's been looking like pre-injury Wiggins. You know, the one that was ripping teams apart from the inside and splashing bombs from the outside? Then uh, not only Wiggins, but Klay Thompson is officially Klay Thompson again. Just look at his statistics since the start of 2023. Nearly 26 points a ball game while shooting 43% from downtown and 91% at the free throw line. 
This 15 game stretch also includes a 54 point outburst against the Atlanta Hawks, a 42 point 12 for 16 three point shooting game against the Thunder, and a host of other all star worthy performances. Sheesh, guys. Then on top of all this, Steph Curry, the human flamethrower, is gonna come back healthy. Then there's one more thing. This team is battle-tested, they have an identity, and they're gonna be deep. Look at this lineup for crying out loud. Steph, Clay, Wiggins, Draymond, and Looney are gonna be the starting five. As per the numbers, this is the best starting five in the entire NBA. Then coming off the bench, you have Steph Curry's doppelganger, Jordan Poole, you have Kaminga, you have DiVincenzo, Lamb, Jerome, J. Mike, and now GP2? That's like 12 deep guys. Normally in the playoffs, teams have an eight or nine man rotation, but the Warriors could play chess and go 12 deep. Honestly, at the moment, it seems like ESPN and all those guys have completely written off the Warriors. They're making a big mistake. I mean, if you honestly look closely, if healthy, this team is arguably better than their 2022 championship squad, which beat the supposedly unbeatable Boston Celtics. Sure, I know losing Otto Porter was a big hit, but in his place, the Warriors now have Jermichael Green, who's recently been a reliable shooter, cutter, and a player who bangs for rebounds. Then on top of that, Kaminga has developed into a solid role player. I mean, he's scoring threes now at a pretty reliable clip when he's open, then, uh, He's also developed a bit of a post game, and it looks pretty lethal too. Here, take a look yourself. Kaminga's up top. He uses his strength and footwork to get close to the rim, then when he's within striking distance, he just rises over his defender for a little seven foot fadeaway. Oh my goodness, guys. If Kaminga develops this a bit more and makes this a consistent shot, what a weapon he's gonna be. Anyway, DiVincenzo has also turned into quite the pickup for the Warriors. I mean, look at the numbers here. He's shooting 43% from downtown since the start of the new year, he's scoring in double digits, and overall, he's just contributing to winning basketball. Once the playoffs start, the NBA is going to realize just how much they slept on this Warriors team. And speaking of the playoffs, imagine this scenario. If the Warriors somehow land in the seventh seed, who's going to take the Grizzlies over them? I mean, I really don't see that series ending any differently than what happened last season. Then let's say that Sacramento wins their first round. Who's going to honestly take the Kings over Steph Curry and the Warriors? I mean, I'm not, but I think you guys knew that. Then comes the Western Conference Finals. If it turns out to be a 1-4 matchup between the Nuggets and the Suns, those two teams are going to beat each other up so bad that I don't think either of them are going to have anything in the tank left for the pace at which Golden State plays at. Then comes the NBA Finals. Sheesh, guys, if that happens, that would be seven finals appearances in nine years. And imagine Curry gets his second finals MVP trophy. Then uh, I wanted to ask you, where would Steph Curry be on the all-time list if he wins it all again this season? 